Uspensky, as you may know, was a brilliant intellectual in the genius realm. Uh, in the early 1900s, he wrote Tertium Organum, which was virtually quantum physics before quantum physics. He was a great philosopher who traveled the world and gave lectures. And that whole life changed when he met the strange and exotic Mr. Gurdjieff and realized that he was dealing with now before him in that little cafe where it all started. He was dealing with those ideas he had been searching for in India and everywhere else. And now they were presented to him in a whole form called uh, the Fourth Way. He became Gurdjieff's primary student, as you know probably, wrote a famous book In Search of the Miraculous, which he himself originally titled Fragments of an Unknown Teaching, and for decades was his uh, right arm until they had a break between them, inevitably. Uh, one might uh, assume that Gurdjieff purposely asked him to do something that he knew he couldn't do, uh, so that Uspensky would be free from the mesmerizing presence that was Gurdjieff. So Uspensky went and taught in England and had uh, great success, a thousand students, while Gurdjieff was struggling terribly in Paris during the war. At one point, Gurdjieff only had four students even. To a terrible accident that uh, ended his great experiment, the Institute for the Harmonious Development of Man. But he forged ahead because he was a powerhouse. Uh, we were never told in any of the anecdotal material what exactly it was that caused Uspensky to finally have to break with him. But even after he had and started his own school, he sent money and support and his own students, like Moïse Nicole, went to see Gurdjieff. We're told Madame Uspensky still had a very close relationship to him. And after Uspensky died, he had not yet published In Search of the Miraculous, and the manuscript was sent by his wife to Gurdjieff, who famously said, after reading it, before I hate that man, now I love that man. Because Uspensky had faithfully and brilliantly captured both the teachings and the story of that time. Why did he end up miserable? According to Rodney Collin, another key student of Uspensky's, who later started his own school in South America, he wrote, as some others did, that Uspensky would be drinking his vodka late into the night, seeming very melancholic, a combination of both his own character and his Russian culture, uh, but more importantly, uh, a sign to all of us that somehow Uspensky, despite all his knowledge, all his abilities had missed the heart of the matter, did not find that which brings peace. So combined with this strange unhappiness that was evident to everyone, Uspensky also told his students, it's in writing, published in one of his last works, one of his transcripts of teachings. He says at the very end to his students, abandon the system. You can imagine the shock. He called it the fourth way system this great intellectual construct that he had created that somehow did not fully transform him into the kind of, shall we say, holy man that uh, is meant to be the end result of all this, or at least uh, someone in that direction. And uh, in telling his students to abandon the system, he also said, go to Mount Athos and discover the origins of the tradition. He was speaking of, of course, the Eastern Orthodox mystical teachings, monastic teachings that the monks for a thousand years kept alive, still keep alive on Mount Athos, the holy mountain they call it. He spoke of the Jesus prayer. So clearly he had himself not made the complete connection, which was that the fourth way is really a secularized, more clinical expression of ancient spiritual teachings from early Christianity. I've often made the parallels. Self-observation is the watch of the heart, spoken of in the Philokalia and all the great uh, holy fathers of that tradition. And in fact, some of his students did follow his instructions, uh, Gerald Palmer being one of them, and he ended up co-translating along with Uspensky's secretary of 30 years, Madame Kadublowski translated a new edition of the Philokalia, which is the primary work 
after the scriptures themselves for the Eastern Orthodox Church. The writings spanning 4th to 11th century of all the great holy men and women of ancient times. Much of it centered on the Jesus prayer and the whole process of transformation. So because Uspensky was such an intellectual, a king of diamonds, the intellectual part of the intellectual center, somehow it did not come down into the heart, did not break through some of his own issues, his chief feature and all of that, to make him the kind of humble, reverent man who might have found contentment, serenity, despite whatever else ailed him. He became obsessed with intellectual ideas like the idea of eternal recurrence, which seems to me to be a, a, an intellectual rabbit hole about some idea of his, it wasn't even Gurdjieff's, about living again again the same life. Interesting, but not transformational, as his ending shows.